Welcome all of you for another virtual guest talk series by Productivity Compass. Today we're joined by a very special guest, Richard Kasparowski, who's going to be talking about core protocols for psychological safety and emotional intelligence. Richard dons several hats. He is uh, an author, a teacher, a speaker, and a coach who focuses on team building and high performance teams. He's also the author of a couple of books on high performance teams, and he leads clients in building and maintaining high performance teams using the best practices of co-protocols, agile, and open space methodology. Richard also teaches and has co-created the course on agile software development at Harvard University and co-teaches the Spark Fellowship at Boston University. Thank you, Richard, for accepting our invitation to address the Zoho Sprints community. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, well, Zoho Sprints is a tool that helps awesome teams build awesome products using Scrum and Kanban. Uh, before we get started, uh, we'll just familiarize you with the tool. Uh, so this session is going to last for about 45 minutes, and we're going to have some time for Q&A in the end. Uh, at any point in time, if you feel the audio or video is not clear enough, please refresh the page. And you can make use of the questions tab on the left panel to post your questions, and I'll make sure I pass them on to uh, Richard during the end of the session. Uh, Richard, uh, the virtual stage is all yours. Cool. So I call the session High Performance Teams. It's about stuff called core protocols. It's about psychological safety. It's about emotional intelligence. It's about how to have an awesome team and some skills that can help us get there. Um, so you heard about me, and now you also have some contact info. You could visit my website. You could email me. You can get in touch with me any way you want. If you have questions during this session, definitely ask during this session. And um, if you have any questions afterward, just ask. I'm also going to do this thing that we do online now. Move. Oh, you know what? This is going to be even better. I'm going to hide all of the faces so I can't see myself and I don't get distracted. So, I like to start with this question. What's the best team you were ever on in your entire life? And what I mean by team here is any group of two or more people aligned with a common goal. Any group of two or more people aligned with a common goal, that's a team. What's the best one of those you've been on in your entire life? Right? That could be a work team. That could be a non-work team. It could be the work team you're on right now or a team from your past. Uh, it could be a school project team. It could be a sports team. It could be a, a group of people aligned with a common goal in a church, religious organization, some nonprofit, goal-driven kind of group. Um, my wife, Molly, so I'm, I'm home in Boston. My wife, Molly, is upstairs. She knits with people sometimes, even today, over, over video. And when they're knitting together, they're a team. They're doing things together that they wouldn't be able to do separately. They're, they're trading skills. They're sharing ideas. They're, they're more creative than they, than they would be solo. What's the best team you were ever on in your entire life? Just identify that team. Lock it, lock it into your head. Maybe that team had a name. Oh, the people on that team. There, there were some people, right? There was two or more people aligned with a common goal. Who are those people? Maybe, maybe even close your eyes. None of us can see each other. So it's totally safe to close your eyes. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody can see you. Nobody can say anything to you or about you. Close your eyes. Bring that team back to life within your brain. Those people, the activities you were doing together, your shared goal. Re-experience doing the work together, the work, the play, the activity, whatever that activity was. Do it right now in your brain with that group of people. And then really feel, really feel what it feels like to be doing that activity with that group, that best team ever. What did it feel like to do that activity with that group? 
And if you could, if you could summarize what it feels like, summarize the sensation of the best team of your life, what does it feel like in one word? Can you summarize it in one word? What's that one word? And I'm, I'm kind of a collector. I like to talk to people about their teams. I like to ask them, what's that one word for that best team of your life? So here's, here's a way for us to, to share together. What's, that, what's the word that describes the best team of your life? If you could aim your web browser at menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and type in this code, 5831541. So menti.com, code. 58315411. What's that one word that describes the best team of your life? Will you share it with us? And I actually have no idea how many people are here, so we'll just pause for a moment and see how many how many responses we get. So this, this live chart, it's, it's kind of a histogram, right? So that means if somebody said the same word as somebody else, that word is bigger. If, if a lot of people said the same word, that's the biggest word. There's some new words for, for me here. I don't know what Kippers is, but it must be good. Best team of your life. These are, these are some of the things people often tell me. Best team of their life. It was fun. That turns out to be the most common word I hear. It, it was fun, that best team, whatever that activity was, that group of people. And here we've got, it felt honest. It was Kippers. I'm going to have to learn that word. There was joy. There was dependency. We were happy, trustworthy. Trust is always up there on the list. We were cohesive. We were supportive. We felt happy. This is the subjective sense of the best team of our lives. This is what it feels like to us within ourselves. And people have been studying this for, I don't know, over five decades now. Best teams, especially in a work setting to try to understand what makes the best teams the best. I've had experiences just like the ones you're sharing, cohesive, trust, honor, fun, joy. When I look back at those best teams, I, I realized I got lucky on most of them. I, we didn't know what we were doing. We, we tried a few things. We didn't have great understanding of what went into great teams. We just got lucky. And uh, starting about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, I, I kind of went on a quest to try to understand what makes the best teams the best, how to, how to have an experience like this again with any group of people I care about, and how to do it on purpose, how to have a best team of my life again on purpose. So that's what, that's what this is about, this 45, 60 minutes together. It's about having the best team of our lives again on purpose. I'm going to share a little bit of research and science on teams and team performance. I'm going to share some concrete practices that we can use and a couple of fun activities that you can do with your favorite people, maybe, maybe live while we do this session or maybe right afterward. So here we go, starting with the science and research. So high-performance teams, people have been researching this in business schools, psychology departments at universities and so on for over five decades now. There's a ton of research in the literature. There's so many different characteristics of teams that people have studied that it's hard to know exactly which ones are, are, are kind of like the truth and, and which ones we should pay attention to. At Google a few years ago, this, this article in New York Times was published in 2016. This research started a couple of years before that. They wanted to understand what made the best teams at Google the best teams at Google. So they looked at all the research and they reproduced a lot of it. They got around 200 teams to participate in reproducing the research. And what they would do is they would measure these different characteristics that people shared in the literature, and they would measure team performance. 
and looked for correlations between various characteristics and how well the team performs. What they found for these teams at Google in this study was that there was one thing that mattered more than anything else. The teams that performed best measured high on psychological safety. Psychological safety, it's this idea, it's this sensation that we feel safe when we're together. This is different from physical safety. We don't have to wear hard hats, steel-toed boots, things like this for, for creative intellectual kind of work that many of us do. But sometimes we don't feel safe with each other. And that, that this, this is what psychological safety is about. It's safe to take risks. It's safe to be vulnerable. It's safe to admit you don't know something. It's safe to share how you're feeling. It's safe to try out a new job. Try out something that you're not already good at and maybe even fail at it. Totally okay. You don't get penalized in your career advancement. You don't get penalized in your current job in any way. That's what it means to be safe. And teams that measure high on safety measure high on performance. This is really cool. Uh, and, and this is in all sorts of industries all over the world. In any kind of team that measures high on safety, those teams measure high on performance. Now, this is the science. This is the, the scientific research. They, they measure one thing. They measure another thing. They notice there's a correlation. They don't say one causes the other. They don't tell you how to do it. Either. They just say, if you have safety on your team, then you probably have performance. Uh, so this is kind of like where the, where the research stops. We don't have a way from this research to induce safety in a team. We just know that if you get lucky and you induce safety in a team, then you probably have a high-performing team. There's related research. This is research on something called team emotional intelligence. This is the research from Vanessa Druskett and Steve Wolf. They shared with me, Steve shared with me the story that psychological safety is a subset of this bigger thing called team emotional intelligence. Uh, psychological safety is one part of it. The other parts of team emotional intelligence include things that you can measure, like we as a team understand how we're feeling and we behave appropriately to make sure we're accomplishing our goals together. We can understand what's happening outside of our team and influence people to make sure that we're accomplishing our goals, and so on. And psych safety is a subset of this team EI. And when you measure teams on team EI, you'll, you'll notice that they, they measure high on performance. If they measure high on team EI, they measure high on performance. And, and like the other research, if, well, this is, this is data. Uh, so we know that if you measure one, you'll probably get the same measurement on the other, high here, high there. Uh, low team EI, low team performance. But, but the research doesn't tell you how to do it. It just says if you get lucky and you measure high on team EI, you're probably going to measure high in performance as well. There's this other research. This is non-academic research. This was uh, something that came to be known as the core protocols. This was the work of Jim McCarthy and Michelle McCarthy. They had one of these, these experiences where they were on a really awesome team. And they kind of realized that they had gotten lucky. Uh, they left that company, they left that team, and they opened a team research lab to try to reproduce that experience to see if they could have a really high-performing team again on purpose in their lab and in their work in industry. They would take a team, give them an assignment in five days to get it done. And they observed these teams in their research, and they noticed that the teams that were successful, the teams that were high-performing, those teams shared similar behaviors, behaviors, uh, the things that they actually did, the ways they talked to each other, the ways they made decisions, whether they shared emotion and how they shared emotion, anything that they did. And they noticed that the successful teams, they had a core set of behaviors in, in common. They wrote down these behaviors. They started teaching these behaviors to other teams. And when they did that, those teams were also high performing. They called these protocols. Protocols are the way well, computers talk to each other. They're also the way humans talk to each other. Before we used the word protocol for computers, we used it for people. The way people behave together in a known way, a, a reproducible way, that's what a protocol is. So they wrote down these behaviors as reproducible recipes that we could all use to get into these states of high TMEI, high psych safety, high performance. 
I, I've shared the core protocols with Steve Wolf, the team EI researcher, and he agrees that each one of these behaviors corresponds to something that the researchers notice in the research on, on high-performing teams, and they seem to induce, this is where it's different from the pure research, practicing these behaviors seems to induce high team EI, high select safety, and high performance. So that's really cool. That's different. Here's another way to share this story. If you want a high performance team, and you probably do, that's probably why you're here with me right now, you definitely want psych safety. The research is solid. And psych safety is a subset of team EI. So you want team emotional intelligence if you want a high performing team. To get that, you need some sort of behaviors that induce it, that get you into that state. There's definitely more than one way to get into that state. I'm going to share a way called core protocols. So the practical skills, this is like how you actually do it now, these, these protocols, these behaviors. We've got a stack of building blocks for high performance teams. And the first building block on the stack is positive bias. What we mean by positive bias is we keep things positive, non-negative. Uh, we don't, well, we pay attention to the words we're using, the body language we're using, and make sure that we orient it to get the positive results that we want. No negation. We, we don't automatically say no to somebody when they offer an, a new idea, when they have a suggestion. You don't automatically say no. Instead, you might pretend that it's a good idea and try it out. Uh, same thing as, as right now with all of us together. I'm going to share some ideas. Instead of saying no, that can't work, maybe you'll pretend for, for a moment that these are ideas that you could try out. Here's something you could try with your team, your group of people that you care about. Oh, it might even be your family. I mentioned my wife as a knitter knitting with people. My wife and I, Molly and I, we are a team. We are a group of two or more people, two people aligned with a common goal. Right? So we're, we're a great team. That's the best team of my life. You might try this activity with some group of people that you care about just to experience what this idea of positive bias is like. When we're teaching uh, classes on these skills, this is, these, these, these are some examples of the activities that we do. So this activity is with a partner, so you do this in groups of two, you make a plan for lunch tomorrow. And there's a catch. The catch is that whenever your partner offers an idea, you respond starting with the words, yes, but. You do this for 60 seconds and see what happens. So it'd go like, hi, partner. Do you want to get lunch tomorrow? And your partner says, yes, but I have a meeting at lunchtime tomorrow. And then you, you try to say, yes, but, yes, but you'd have more time, you'd, you'd have more fun if you had lunch with me instead of going to that work meeting. And then your partner would say, yes, but if I don't go to that work meeting, my boss will get mad. And yes, but, yes, but, and yes, but, and yes, but. You do that with each other for a minute and you see what happens. And then you do it again. This time you change it to yes and. It would go like this. Hi friend, do you want to have lunch tomorrow? And your friend is like, yes. And even though I have a work meeting, I'll either tell my boss or invite my boss to join us. And you're like, yes. And that would be great if your boss and your workmates could join us. We could, we could share what we're doing at my company with what you're doing at your company and, and see what new ideas we come up with together. Yes, and even though we're doing this over video, uh, we could all get the same thing to eat for lunch. And you're like, yes, and that thing could be, I don't know, something that we can get delivered from a big chain restaurant. So we all have exactly the same thing to eat and we have the same experience. And you do this for 60 seconds and you see what happens. And what people usually report at the end, when we debrief, is that the yes but experience feels like you're saying no to each other, uh, that you're putting up walls, that you're blocking each other. Whenever somebody has a, an idea, you tell them no, basically. And the yes and version of it feels like we're building on each other's ideas. We're creating something new and special that neither one of us would have been able to create alone. And it feels really good. It's fun. If you're doing this in a room with a lot of people, you would hear laughter. It's like, there's some joy there. Oh, 
I heard joy, fun. These are things that people think about. These, these are the feelings of being on a great team. Yeah, it's true. Try this activity with a group of people you care about. See what happens. This is really just to experience positive bias. Positive bias is the foundation of a great team. And we add on to that foundation freedom, autonomy, the ability to decide what to do, who to do it with, how to do it. These are characteristics that you'll notice if you watch high-performing teams. They get to decide for themselves. We've got some short URLs here. If you want to look up the details on these recipes, visit, the, visit these little URLs, like casper.co slash pass, casper.co slash co. These are very specific ways that, well, you can incorporate these as team agreements. You can say, on our team, it's okay to pass. On our team, it's okay to check out. Pass means when you're doing an activity, well, you don't have to do the activity. You could opt out. You could pass on any activity that's happening with your team, but still stay engaged with the team. And check out means if you don't feel right with your team, you can leave. This works in virtual space as well as in physical space. In virtual space, leaving is as easy as turning off the camera, turning off the mic, ending the meeting from your side. On really high-performing teams, people get to opt out. People get to decide what they're doing. People get to opt in on whatever the team is doing. By making these behaviors very explicit, it builds safety. It means nobody is here because they've been coerced. Nobody is here because they've been threatened. When people are in those coerced and threatened states, their brains don't work as creatively. It's how we humans are. But when we're there voluntarily, voluntarily, when we choose to be together, well, that's when the creative sparks burn. That's when we are amazing together. When we choose to be together and we get to choose what we're doing, how we're doing it, and who we're with. So you could try these with your team. You could make pass and check out two of your team agreements. We add on to that self-awareness. Turns out that self-aware individuals are the building blocks of an awesome team. We've got three recipes, three protocols for self-awareness. Check in, ask for help, and personal alignment. And the short URLs here so you can, you can find all the details of these recipes. Okay. Agreements, Te team agreements that you could make with your team. You could add on these three additional agreements with your teammates. Again, any, any group of people you care about, any group of two or more people that you care about with a common goal. Here's an activity. Let's do this activity, well, <laughs> solo. We're all, we're all sitting wherever we're sitting. Fill in the blank on this sentence. I feel blank. How do you feel right now? And you can fill in the blank with any word or words that express how you are feeling right now. I'll pause while you do that. Oh, you could get you could get a piece of paper and a pen. You could do these activities with a piece of paper and a pen. It would help you actually do them. Try it. Or use a text editor on your computer. OK, we have a second version of this activity, or part two of this activity. Fill in the blank. Same thing, I feel blank. But now choose one of these words. It's multiple choice. I feel blank. And fill in the blank with glad, sad, mad, or afraid. How do you feel right now? And which one of those words, or more than one of those words, is closest to how you feel right now. And you could write down your answer on your scrap of paper and your text editor. And then add on a little bit more information. What else is going into how you're feeling right now? How are you feeling right now? Let's share this with each other. So aim your web browser back to menti.com and fill in the blank. Multiple choice, I feel blank. How do you feel right now?
my sense is that we are a group of people who are feeling very safe psychologically right now. And that's because I see all four of these primary emotions represented here. There's some people who are feeling glad, some people feeling sad, some mad, some afraid. This is believable. This is the full spectrum of human emotion. I, I believe this. Now, a behavior that we could try together is to just share this with each other, maybe out loud. You know, if you're on a video meeting with somebody, voice meeting with somebody, uh, you could do this in writing, in your, in your text interaction tool like Slack or whatever you're using. You could do this in email. Teams that do this build up team emotional intelligence. And we know from the research that that leads to higher performance. It leads to safety. So here's an example of how you might do this with your teammates. You might say, well, let's see, we've got casper.co slash CI. This is the emotion check-in behavior, casper.co slash CI. So the, the full recipe is there. And it, it goes like this. When you're in a group with people, you can share how you're feeling with each other. The way you do it is just by saying it out loud. And then each person takes a turn doing it. So here, here's, here's what it might be like. Uh, you might say, I'll, I'll do it for myself. I feel glad. I'm, I'm glad that we get to do this today. I'm glad that uh, oh, I think we even have a, a slide showing how to do this. I feel glad that, that we get to do this today. I'm glad that you're here joining us. Um, I'm glad that well, I have my health. My family members are healthy. Um, most of the people surrounding me, all the people surrounding me are pretty healthy. Um, I'm sad that there are some people around me who are not quite as healthy. Um, I'm mad, mad about some of some of our various world governments' responses to this health crisis that we're all experiencing. Um, and I guess that means I'm mad at me because, hypothetically, I'm in a democracy. I'm part of the government. So I'm mad at myself for not doing more. Uh, and I'm afraid. I'm afraid of. Uh, I'm afraid of things as I don't know things as silly as I might lose my internet connection. Who knows? Anything could happen to the wires. Uh, and I'd get cut off from you, and i get cut off from the rest of the world and, and all the work and, and connection with people. Uh, I'm afraid of getting sick. I'm, I'm, it's, it's not even an exaggeration. I am deathly afraid of getting sick with coronavirus or COVID. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen. And then you finish up by saying, I'm in. That just lets people in your group know that you're done sharing how you're feeling. And they say, welcome. Right? This is something... I'm, I'm, you all just said welcome, right? Yeah, I think I heard you. Uh, this is something you could try right after this session with, so, with, with a friend, with any group of people you care about. See what would happen if you shared how you're feeling with each other. Most people describe that it, they feel better. They feel more connected. They feel relaxed. They notice that other people are feeling the same things they're feeling, even though they never said it out loud before. They, they feel like they're together. And again, this is one of the characteristics of, this is one of the behaviors that people do on high-performing teams. They share how they're feeling with each other. So you could try this. If you want a, if you want a better team, you could try sharing how you're feeling with each other. Here's another activity. I want blank. Another one of these fill-in-the-blank activities. So fill-in-the-blank. What do you want right now? But this is a special want. What do you want more than anything else in the world? What's your biggest, greatest, most important want? You know, this is, this is a bigger want than, oh, it's, it's 1230 in my time zone. I really want lunch. How about something bigger than that? Because you can get lunch. That's easy. Something bigger than that. What's the biggest, most important want in your life? You actually write down your answer. Okay, now, if you were honest about it, if this was a really big want, the biggest want, the most important thing to you, why don't you have it? Or if it's, I want all of it, why don't you have all of it already? This big, most important thing in your life, 
why don't you already have the thing that's most important to you? What do you, either you're, it's not really what you want or, or there's something in the way. So what's blocking you? What, what's impeding you? What's slowing you down? What's, what's getting in the way of that big, most important thing that you want? Fill in the blank again, write down your answer. And then imagine that if there were a superpower that you could have, you'd fill in the blank again. This is another I want blank. I want some superpower. What's the superpower that if you had it, it would eliminate everything that's blocking you and get you all those important things that you want? Here are some superpowers that you can choose from. Self-awareness, integrity, courage, passion, peace, presence, self-care, fun, wisdom, and health. You get to decide the definition. You get to define each one of these words. What does it mean for you? Imagine that one of these was your superpower. Oh, the star next to self-awareness. That's the default answer. If you're not sure what you want, maybe you want self-awareness. Now, this, this future superpower, what we're going to do is we're going to call it your personal alignment. This is actually the personal alignment protocol. This is the recipe for it. Go through these steps. Imagine that one of these virtues is your future superpower. And that if you had it, if you had this superpower, you'd be able to eliminate everything that's in your way and get everything that you want, those big, most important things. Now, that's, that's the correct answer for you, whichever one that is. And then, we'll add on to that. It's not just going to happen. You're going to have to actually build this skill. So what will you do every day to practice your superpower? What can you do every day? Now, let's say your, your future superpower, your personal alignment was presence. What does that mean to you? And how could you practice presence every day? How could you collect evidence that you've been practicing presence? You know, maybe you make it a point to meditate every morning for at least five minutes. And you keep a log. Every time you meditate, you write it in your log. And you have evidence that you've been practicing it every day. You can just look through the logbook and you can see. That would be a way, to, a way to do it. Pick pick one of these and find a way to practice it every day. And collect some evidence that you've been practicing it. And I'm curious about which one you picked. What is your future superpower that you could practice every day? Will you share it with us? So some full spectrum superpowers in our future again. We're going to have a lot of passionate people with wisdom and health who take care of themselves, who have presence and peace and practice courage. They're so courageous. And they're very self-aware. All right. This, again, is the kind of activity that you could do, well, solo, of course. It's your personal alignment. Also, you could talk to a friend about it. Try this activity together. Ask them what their personal alignment is. Ask them what that word means to them. Ask them how they will practice it. And they could ask you the same sorts of questions. And it turns out to be, well, a way you can support each other. How could you support me in my practice of peace? Or when I'm practicing passion, this is what it will look like. Will you support me? How could you support me? You could ask for help on this. Turns out it, it connects people into a stronger team when we know what we want individually and together. And we'll move on from that to connection. Right, The fourth building block for amazing high-performing teams. Um, we've got the emotion check-in, ask for help, personal alignment. These are individual self-awareness things. And we add on these two more, intention check-in, investigate. 
investigate is about being curious. When you tell me more about blank, just asking open questions about anything. Here's some examples of questions that you might ask, really open-ended questions that draw a lot of information out of person or people you're talking to that actually help you connect better with each other. And you could ask your friend, your teammate, your partner, these kinds of questions to learn more about their personal alignment, their future superpower, really about anything. When we do this as a team building activity, we, we focus specifically on that future superpower of yours, that personal alignment. And it helps you learn more about your personal alignment, that future superpower, how you could practice it, how you could hone that skill. It helps them learn a lot more about you. It helps you all connect together into an amazingly cohesive team. It helps you feel safe together. These are all the things that go into being a high performance team. So here are some Here's some parts of the recipe for getting your own high-performing team. And so you can try this. I encourage you to do this with your friend or partner, your teammate, whoever it is, that person you care about. Just ask them. Ask them more. Don't tell them anything. Just ask them. Now, these, these, these recipes, these activities, these scientific, these scientific jargony words like psychological safety and team emotional intelligence and high performance, these really all mean the same thing as love. If you, if you watch a high-performing team, they look like a group of people who care about each other. I use the word love for that. I always use the word love for that. I used to be afraid of using the word love. And it's not a word you hear in many work organizations either. If, if you have a problem with this word in, in any way, you can try friendship instead. This is what I mean, this, this kind of love, friendship kind of love. Uh, when you watch a high-performing team, when you look back at your best team of your life, it probably felt like friendship at least, maybe like love. When you watch a high-performing team, if we could get a high-performing team on the screen, you know, watch them working together, they would look like a group of people who care about each other. They would look like they're friends. They would look like they are aligned with shared goals. They would look like they are willing to do whatever it takes to help the others succeed. And that's friendship. That's, that's love. These recipes that I've shared so far, this is, the, this is the recipe for friendship. Put them all together and we get friendship, we get love. And this is the recipe for a high-performing team as well. If you, if you think back to the best relationships of your life, the best teams of your life, whatever, whatever it was, best group of people of your life, you started with positive bias. You, you got together because you wanted to do something together, not, not to destroy anything. Uh, that you, you wanted to do something that was, that was good for, for yourselves and each other. And you had freedom. You got to choose who you, were, who you got together with, who you did that activity with, and, and how you did that activity together. Nobody coerced you into doing it. Coercion is not in the recipe for friendship. And you did this emotion check-in kind of thing, even if you didn't call it that. The best team of your life, the best relationship of your life, you undoubtedly shared how you were feeling with each other. And they shared with you. Nobody judged anybody for how they were feeling. It's, it was just something that you shared and you connected more over it. Oh, in personal alignment, you shared with each other what was your biggest, most important goal. And investigate. You asked each other questions. You, you went deeper. You got to know each other better. You connected. You kind of became one as a team. And this is a little different from what many of us hear about in, in work situations. Right? This is, this is the truth. If this truth isn't what you're allowed to talk about at your work, then we can turn it into code. I mean, people, people are much better with code. We have an easier time talking about code, understanding code. This is, a, this is the code. This is the script that you could run with your team to get into that state of psych safety, high emotional intelligence, high performance. It's totally reproducible. You can try it. 
And there's two more building blocks on the stack. It's, it's, it's awesome to have this connected friendship kind of feeling together. But we are talking about high performance teams here, so productivity. High performing teams have ways to make decisions, to resolve conflict, and to perfect each other's ideas, to give each other feedback in a way that works. And we've got some recipes for this. You can find all the details of the recipes from these short URLs. And the final thing that you'll notice on high performing teams, if you got a chance to watch them, they have a way to tell each other that things aren't going well, that they had some team agreements and they've veered off course and, and let's get back on course together. And they call this one protocol check. So this is the full set of these recipes, these core protocols, these behaviors. If you were watching high performing teams, you would notice that they have behaviors like these. And you could try out behaviors like these on your team, your group of people, and get similarly great results. So, another question for you. What stood out for you? What's your key takeaway on this? I've got some suggested key takeaways. Also that last one, something else. If you don't see your key takeaway here, answer something else and then let me know what it is later. I'm curious about what you took away from this. So thank you, friends, for sharing your takeaways. You got his friendship. That's totally in line with high performance on, on teams. Uh, we've got core protocols, these behaviors, actual things you can do together. You can get more emotional intelligence by using them. Oh, and, and emotional intelligence, that's a way to have more psychological safety. And at least one person has something else. I, I hope to hear what that something else is later on. Uh, another look at these key takeaways. I showed you a diagram like this earlier. Core protocols are a way to build team emotional intelligence. Psych safety is a subset of team EI. All of these things together lead you to a high performance team. If you want a high performance team, you want to have some behaviors that you can do together, some habits that you can get into. Things you can do all the time, every day with each other that get you there. So here's a set of ideas that can get you there sort of practices that can get you there. How can you do this for your team? Well, I just shared a bunch of recipes with you. You can just take these recipes and do them. Uh, they're all free at this website, thecoreprotocols.org. They're free like ideas can be free, like free software free. Uh, I've got a couple of books you could read. The Blue Book is a free download. You can get it from my website. You can ask me for help anytime. Just ask. That's all you have to do. Now, I've got some events coming up, more events like this, some other things that I'm sharing with people. Um, is that next week? Next week, how to teach online, if that's interesting to you. Come check it out. Uh, also next week, another version of what we're doing here. I think next week we'll actually be interactive. We'll be able to talk to each other. And fall semester at Harvard, it's, it's open enrollment, agile software development, everything about agile software development, the people things, the business things, the high performance teams things, building a real product together as part of the class. Uh, it's open enrollment. You don't have to be a Harvard student to take the class. You can come join us. And uh, something I'm calling the team transformation canvas. It's a, it's a fill in the blanks to walk you through some of the ideas that we looked at here today and to do it with your teammates to transform your team, starting by transforming yourself. So these are some things that you're invited to join me on. Oh, and will you give me feedback? Perfection game. This is the feedback tool in the core protocols. Um, I'm asking for help. Will you give me help? Tell me what you thought about this session. I mean, we're not done. We still have time for some Q&A. Give it a score from 1 to 10. 
or 10 would be like, it was the most awesome thing that ever happened in my life. Tell me what you liked about it and tell me what else it would take if you didn't give it a 10. What, what, what else could we do to make this kind of session a 10? I'll pause and wait a moment to give you a chance to give you a chance to do that. All right, and that's all. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. In my time zone, anyway, this afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, thanks for interacting and participating. I really appreciate that. I love collecting people's ideas together and resharing them with everybody. You got all my contact info here. If, if you were one of those people who answered something else for your key takeaway, let me know what it was. Email me or connect with me somehow. And that's it for my presentation part of this. Thank you once again, Richard, for addressing the Zoho Sprint community. And as Richard mentioned, he is also available to help you build awesome high performance teams. Thank you so much for hosting and I'm glad everybody was here and we could we could play a little bit today. Thanks.